to the Upcycle Canada podcast. I'm Jennifer, and together with my husband Dave, we started with an idea, worked on it as a side hustle, and grew it into our our first eco-friendly store. At Upcycle Canada, we repurpose, refinish, and reuse discarded items, giving them new life. Sit in on the conversation as we continue to grow from a small side hustle into something much more. Special guests will drop by and share their journey with you as well. This is the most eco-friendly small business podcast in your favorites. This is Upcycle Canada, where yesterday's items are reborn. Let's do this. Welcome to the podcast. So glad to be here with you again. Thanks for dropping by. Jen's at work. But I had a chance to talk to Josh Greenwood from the salvagelife.ca. I did a little search on Instagram. I typed the word salvage in the search and Joss showed up. And it just happens that we know mutual people. Um, we've, we've done, we're in the kind of the same working space and in salvage. And this is her first podcast episode ever as a guest, which I found out after we finished recording. But, uh, Joss came on and shared her story about taking down and renovating her home from the, from the 1800s and salvaging the wood and using it to make things for people. And now it's turned into a business. And now we get to share that business with you on the Upcycle Canada podcast. Go grab a coffee. Go do, go grab something. Go grab a, a beverage of your choice. And join us for a great conversation with Joss Greenwood, the salvagelife.ca. Here we go. Thanks. Welcome, everybody, to the podcast. Welcome to Upcycle Canada. Jennifer, my wife, is at work. So I'm running solo today, completely, again, unsupervised, but having a great conversation today with my guest, who is here in Ontario, Canada, who also works alongside with our friends at Mango Paint, which we sell in our store, and we have a great thing to talk about today. We're going to talk to to Joss today from the salvagelife.ca, all about repurposing and salvage. Welcome. How are you? I'm good. I'm very good. Thank you for having me. How are you? Awesome. Awesome. So tell everybody where in the world you are. So I'm in Whitby, Ontario, which is just outside of Toronto. Excellent. And you are the salvagelife.ca, right? Yes. Yes. The salvage life. So, and you work again at Mango, which is great. We'll shout out to Mango Paint and all the great people there. We love their products in our store. So you get to work there a couple days a week and that might be fun, right? Yes, it's very fun. So the studio itself is Mango Reclaimed, and then their brand of paint is the, is Mango Paint, and I work as their custom furniture restyler. So I get to uh, work on people's furniture and repurpose furniture. So yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, so we'll put links to all their stuff because they do amazing work, and you as well, over there, and we appreciate them so much. So let's talk a little bit about your history, because going back and looking at where you've come from, this all seemed to start for you on a, a home reno and some materials that you have been salvaging in the process. I'm really curious again about your home, a little history about your home as well, because there's um there's a rich history there. And I'd love to kind of talk about that. Sure. So our house was built in 1856, so it's a really old home. Um, great bones, but, you know, crooked, needs some TLC. So we started doing some renos. Um we started in my boys' room because there was a vent in the wall, but it wasn't actually connected to anything, so they had no heat in their room. So started there, and when we were taking down the lath and plaster, when I saw the slats, I thought, like, these are just too pretty to throw away. These need to be made into something. So I made my husband actually pry off the boards one by one. They are about four foot lengths. Uh, at first, he was like, he just wanted to smash and demo, and then, uh, but he he quickly got on board. So we took them out as cautiously as we could, stored them in buckets. I probably stored them for about three years before I kind of came up with an idea for them. And it was his birthday. And I made him a big two foot by three foot um, stylized Union Jack out of the lath. And uh, he he loved it. And I liked the process of it, choosing the different pieces, the different colors, putting it all together. So that's kind of where the, the salvaged wood art started. It's it's interesting anytime I talk to somebody who's doing any kind of reno on an older home to think that the last person that saw that wall before the plaster went up, you know, who were they? When was this? Like, was it the original 
you know, the original house when they built it, like, and then the wood itself is how old is the wood that they used to build this home? Right. Right. So right. we were talking about a house in the 1800s, but there was mature wood. So how yeah. old was a tree? Like, that's like, that's amazing. It's true, yeah, because I say it's, you know, over 170 years old, but it could be even over 200 years old, right? Because, like you yeah. said, how long was that tree there before they used it? Um, I love the history. So when we were taking down the plaster, you also see all the layers of wallpaper. There were probably four or five layers of wallpaper when we were taking it down. So you can kind of see the different, you know, the people that owned it, the different styles of that time, right? <laughs> so we saved a lot yeah. of the wallpaper, too. We save everything. We saved all kinds of pieces of wallpaper to maybe do a, a collage or something with. But nice. Yeah, it's really cool to see the history, how they built it, what people did with you know at different times. That's what I like. I like knowing that something has a history, had a life before, and now it gets to have another life as something new. And the person that built this originally had no thought that one day someone like you and your family would come in and 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 change something or take down their work like but just the yeah. detail that's behind those walls that no one would ever see right that's amazing yeah. to see that kind of craftsmanship as well oh yeah it's it's amazing how they used to build um so solid and the wood is i mean it's so aged now it's gorgeous so it'd be nice if you could leave it exposed we did actually just do another reno in another room and we left the rafters in the ceiling exposed because they were just too pretty to close up so we changed the way the whole ceiling went so that we could leave some of that exposed and show that nice. history nice so for a lot of people again like they're doing home rentals it's just rent a bin throw everything outside and you're done but i love the fact that you're really mm -hmm. purposeful with reusing this and then the story behind it as well right you know this isn't wood that you've purchased from a large box store and you know you bought it and took it home and made something you're repurposing from something that was already there and you're extending the life of a product beyond when it was intended to live for right so tell me about why salvage is so important for you and why you have that in the name for your business um well i grew up um i grew up going antiquing my parents our house and still they've been in the same house for 50 years and it looks the same as when i was growing up it's full of antique furniture and antique items um, at the time, I didn't enjoy going antiquing. My brother and I thought, um, oh, another, you know, antique trip. Um, and I swore I would have a modern house, but, um, my love for it grew too. It's, it's the history. It's the craftsmanship. My dad was a woodworker. And so you really get to appreciate how well things were made. Um, and so it's just kind of carried on. We like to go antiquing. We like to go find things that, um, you know, can be repurposed or, or need a new life. So, the salvage lay for me. Originally, um, when we bought this house and we were doing projects, I thought, you know, if I'm going to share, I want to share as we go along the different things that we do. And my original name in my head was My Vintage Kitchen. And that's kind of how I, as I was doing things, I always thought of it because um, we started with our kitchen. But when I found the lath and I started doing the art, um, we do furniture. Um, it's the, the, it incorporates everything, right? Not just the home. So, Salvage to me means like rescue and save, which is what we do with um, all the items. And then life is because it just incorporates everything that we do. We thrift our clothes, um, our furniture, our items in the house. We always, if we find something, we try to find a new purpose for it. So it just kind of incorporates who we are as a family and kind of what I try to do with my business. In our world of disposable everything, one-time use, um, why why do you think this is so important? And and why the message, like, why should we share this with our community that salvaging and repurposing is an important thing for our environment? Why do you think that's important to you? Um, I It's important. I mean, I have two boys. They're 12 and 15. And, you know, it's the world that we're going to be leaving for them. And so we need to take care yeah. of our environment. Um, and, and like I said, things were built so well. Like, they don't need to be thrown away. You don't need new items. You can always find um, a repurpose. And it you know, we taught our boys to, even when they were working on art and let's say they made a mistake, we're like, no, it's not ruined. What can you make of it? Can you change it? Can it become something else? And it kind of just mm. became a lesson with us that, you know, just because something's a mistake or it's broken or like you can turn it into something else. And I think that just filters through everything that we do. It's just, 
It's important. I like looking at something and knowing that someone had it before and thinking about the people that, you know, had the life in the home with the desk or whatever it is. Um, I just like that. And I think we need to be more careful and not just, you know, consumption, you know, all these new things and they're not as well built, which means then you just need to buy it again and you need to buy it again. So I'm thinking about my kids and, and their future and hopefully their kids future. And I think it's a lesson that everyone needs to learn and, and take to heart. So in re- in response and going back to when you were a kid, are your kids doing the same thing to you? Or are they kind of rolling the eyes like, here goes mom with more repurposing. Yeah, are they getting it? Are they starting to kind of clue into that? Um, it's probably a little bit of both. Mm, okay. Um, we did try. So with them, um, we started them on collections. So, you know, the little figures, like the little animal figures, um, the Wade figures. Um, so my one son collected those. Um, one collected little jackknives. Um, and then we also, um, little trucks. So, we kind of got them on collection, so whenever we went into an antique shop, they were going and looking their for stuff. their things, good. too. That's good. So it made it a little bit more fun for them. Um, and then as they got older, like, we we will go on our own. We don't always take them because we know it's not necessarily what they want to do. Um, so, yeah, they get it. They do get it, and they, they're they pretty good about it. But, yes, they rolled their eyes and, oh, <laughs> do we have to stop? But, yeah, I got that, yeah. too. <laughs> and you're like, I remember that feeling. I I can identify with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah, I know exactly how they feel. So I think we didn't do it as much as you know I did when I was little. We've tried to you know do other you know trips and do other things, but yeah, I I know how they feel. So where where did the training come from? You did you lean on your on your dad and his expertise in the past for woodworking? Is this something you've worked on yourself? So um, I. Definitely did lean on my dad. When we first bought the house, we were, you know, fixing up trim and baseboards and and things like that, um, fixing doorways. So I did lean on him. And then um, a few years ago, I actually took a carpentry class. Uh, I thought it was a cabinet making class, (laughs) but my husband was tired of waiting for me to sign up for it. So he registered me, but it was actually for carpentry. So I learned how to frame and insulate vapor barrier, drywall do trim and baseboards and windows and, and all that good stuff. And Perfect. Um, at first I thought, oh, no, I'm going to switch. And then I thought, no, like we've got this old house we're always working on. They, these are good skills. So I took that course and I loved it. And uh, I learned, I knew how to use the miter saw. And my dad had taught me the scroll saw. But there I really got familiar with the planer and the table saw and just got more comfortable with tools overall. So, nice. Yeah. That's a great skill to learn too, right? Mike, I've got two boys and they're both in the trades and uh, I love seeing them just the pride of building something and, you know, working with your hands. That's, that's a great thing. And I guess not as popular today, you know, with everything digital and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a little different. And if I, like, if you took me back to high school now, I would definitely leave and go into the trades. Really? Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I love building. I love working with my hands. So. I would definitely do that now. And I've said to, you know, to my boys, if that's an interest, but they seem to be taking different paths, but I would totally support that if that was something they wanted to do. Yeah. yeah. It's that creative side that we get to unlock by working with our hands and with wood and materials. Good satisfaction yeah. in that, you know, being able to create something from something that somebody doesn't want. And that yes. kind of goes back to why we have Upcycle Canada. We really identify with what you're doing. And that's why... Mm-hmm. We reached out to you on, I think it was Instagram, to, to have a conversation today. And, yeah. you know, not even really putting the whole mango thing into the equation. We wanted to talk to you because of, of yeah. what you're doing. And it's just a bonus that we kind of have that in common. Um, tell me about your journey through social media and building a little business around your passion. Um, so that's been a real learning curve for me. Uh, I wasn't even on Instagram before I started the business. I have a personal account, but I've never even posted on it. So I um I did my first post September 25th of 2020. So it's almost, it's coming up to two years. And wow. it took a lot for me to do that first post. Um, I love building and doing what I'm doing and sharing it with friends, but I hadn't put myself out there. So it took a lot for me to write that first post and and hit the the post button um i'm getting more comfortable with it sometimes i go into a mode where i just want to work and i want to hide and i don't want to have to worry about that but it's such a great community 
I like mm-hmm. people are so supportive. I think with the pandemic too, I think everyone really got into the handmade and local shopping. And so it's just been amazing to see that support and people commenting. And so when I do post and all that happens, I'm like, oh, this is amazing. Like I, I need to keep going with this. Um, so it's a learning. It, it takes a lot for me to put myself out there. I kind of like to just work in the background, but I'm yeah. learning. And I am part of a, a really amazing community called the Jagged Plum Collective. It's um, mm. it's an Instagram community of woodworkers and mosaic artists and, and creatives. And so they put out challenges every month and they're very supportive. So I, I joined those them last year and that's been amazing because you just feel like you're part of this bigger thing and not just doing it on your own. And when you have issues or you need tips or you have questions, you can just send an email. It's five or six ladies that kind of run the group. And then it's, you know, a larger group outside of that, but they're always willing to answer questions on, you know, it could be shipping or pricing or anything. So it's kind of been nice to have that too. That's been a really nice foundation. And, you you know, you feel like you're part of a community, which is really nice. Yeah. And that whole thing about being able to search something, just so you know, your name, Salvage Life, it was so easy to find you with a simple search in Instagram. Right. And that's how we're connecting. So yeah. that whole that's power of, of a name, right? Yeah. So because I literally typed in salvage on Instagram and bing, 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 there you are right at the top of the list. So <laughs> um, awesome. it works. It really yeah. works. So yeah. congratulations on like it's a great name Thank you. For, for your business. Uh, what do you what are your plans long term? Like what how do you want to see this grow? Do you want to keep it where it is? Do you want to go big? Like what are your thoughts? Um. I don't want to, I don't want to keep it where it is. I definitely want it to grow. Um, I would really like, like right now I do sort of smaller mosaics. Um, I do, now that we're coming into fall season, I make salvage trim trees. That was kind of something that sort of happened. I was actually making a tree to be a display item for some ornaments, but then people liked the tree. So I got into making those. So um, in the fall, I kind of switched to making trees and ornaments and garlands and things like that. Um, but I, with the mosaics, I'd, I'd like to do like larger, like maybe in larger installations, you know, so like an island or feature walls, or I'd kind of like to go bigger. That's something mm-hmm. I would definitely like to do. And maybe even some more builds. Um, I built built in bunk beds for my two boys a couple of years ago, and I used salvaged wood for that. Our neighbors um, demolish their garage and they had this huge pile of wood in their backyard. And so I knocked on the door and I was like, what are you going to do with that? And they're like, we're just going to send it to the dump. And I'm like, do you mind if I take it? And they said, no, go ahead. So my husband and my boys, we just like carried it. It's only two doors down. So we just carried it piece by piece into our backyard. (laughs) And then I built their whole bunk beds and they're, they're kind of like, it's almost like a tree fort. Like it's got walls. They have to, you know, climb inside. They have cubbies inside. Um, so even, you know, builds like that, I've done, you know, tongue and groove feature walls in our own house out of salvaged wood. So nice. that's what makes it a bit challenging. I'd like to do bigger builds, but I still like the idea of using like everything we've done in our home has really been with salvaged wood. So mm. it's kind of incorporating that, but yeah, I'd like to do some larger pieces going forward and sticking with the custom. Custom is my favorite. Um, I love that. Yeah connection with the customer they they come up with some really cool ideas that i wouldn't necessarily come up with myself um so it pushes me it challenges me you know you have to find something that works and and even the back and forth sometimes they're like oh i'd like more dark in it or i want this and you kind of change it, and then they're like oh i love it and that whole process for me is really satisfying so i'm hoping that i can grow my custom business as well see that's amazing and i'm like in in two years ish that's that's amazing yeah. to go from idea, from yeah. concept to to actually having stuff built, and now having people reach out. Yeah, some random guy in St. Catharines wanting you on his podcast. Like <laughs> yeah. it's all kind of fitting together, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really, it's been really great. I started, like I said, I, the trees kind of took off my first fall. So when I hit January, I was like, oh no, it's not, you know, it's not tree season now. What am I gonna do? And then I started making more of the lath and then I got some custom work and it just, it's sort of, yeah, just kind of kept growing. And I, I love it. 
I, I work part time at Mango, which I love too. That's repurposing furniture, and the team mm-hmm. there is amazing. Um, yeah. So I, I love that. And then on you know in my own time, I'm working on the business, and then I have two boys. So you know it's just trying to schedule it all in. But it's so nice to work on something that that you love and and be able to like you know grow your own business. Do you do like vendor events? Do you take your stuff out on the road and do a display? Anything like that? Well, yes, I do. Um, I tried to do a few more of those this year. Um, I did a couple in the summer, but I have some lined up for fall and for the holidays because the trees are kind of um, more of an item that seem to work for markets. So I do have a few lined up for fall and Christmas. Yeah. And I enjoy that. Yeah. I I um there's one that I do at the beginning of the year called Art Salad in Grafton and it's um it's at the home of um Anya Hartle she's a mosaic artist and does amazing work and she brings everyone into her backyard it's a be- beautiful grounds uh it's a two day event and there I love people just want to talk about like the art and where you get the inspiration and the wood and so I do really enjoy talking about what I do so I do like events where you kind of get to, to to do that and explain. And when people first look at it, they don't necessarily know that it's lath from behind a wall. Mm-hmm. And so when you explain that, and then I say, you know, I've salvaged from seven different homes now. So that's why you get all the different colors, the grays, the browns, you know, the lights. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of neat when you get to explain that and then people know what's been put into that artwork. So Justin, maybe somebody's listening to this and they're like, I'm, I'm inspired. I want to start this too. I want to do something like you're doing. But mm-hmm. who am I to to do this? I'm not a professional woodworker. I haven't taken a course on home renovations. I don't have I don't have the 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 pedigree. I don't have a dad that helped me in the past. Yeah. But I really want to do this, but I have this imposter syndrome that mm-hmm. you know, I'm probably not good enough to do what you're doing. What would you say to somebody like that? Oh my gosh, I would say I feel the same way. Um I would say you just have to go for it. I think if you if you have an idea and you feel creative, then you just have to go for it and and put yourself out there. Um, maybe find a community, find you know something like the Jagged Plums and ask the questions. There are so many people out there. You know, reach out to me. I'd be glad to share um, information. You don't have to have. There are like makers I've talked to that started out with like the hand miter saw cutting their corners. Yeah. You don't have to have the big equipment. You can start small and then, and then work up. But you know, if you're inspired by someone, reach out to them and ask them. Um, most makers I find are really willing to share information and, and help out. There's lots of room for everybody. So yeah. I'd say so is, is there somebody locally or somebody you've met through Instagram or whatever that you're kind of, like buddies with and you kind of beyond what you're talking about that group. Is there somebody in particular that you kind of work with? Um, so I have a good friend. It's not a woodworking friend. Um, okay. She operates as artsy girl. She's actually one of my friends from primary school. So we've, we were friends in primary school, um, kind of got separated. Our primary school had a 20 year reunion. Like, I don't want to say how many years ago. Cause like, <laughs> Last year. Okay. Last, yeah, year yeah. Yes. Last, yeah, last year, yes. Yeah, last year, yeah. Last year, years okay. ago, and we sort of reconnected. <laughs> and so she's kind of on the same same journey. So she makes amazing textile art, again, from repurposed fabrics. She makes wood earrings out of wine barrels from wineries. So she's, we kind of get together every couple Fridays, and we try to push each other, like, what do you, what do you want to get out of the fall season? What markets do we want to do? Like, you know, do we need to work on a website? We need, so we kind of bounce mm-hmm. ideas off each other and sort of hold each other accountable. We're pretty forgiving, so we don't push too hard. But um, she's a great uh, resource and friend for me. So I, I don't feel like I'm in it alone, right? We're always talking. And then, like I said, the Jagged Plum Collective, anyone on, on that in that group is always willing to help. So Nice. So are your products available online or are they mostly in person then? Uh, mostly in person right now I do have some pieces we have a local place called the makers hub and it's um, a, a retail space yeah for vendors to come in and showcase their stuff so I do have some things in there but for the fall and holiday season it'll be mainly going to markets and then people can reach out to me I'm still working on my website um, it's probably one of the things I would say about myself is it's not so easy to know what I have available 
I have a lot of pieces at my house and I, I share as I'm making, but I'm not as good at saying like, Hey, I have this, you know, and promoting myself. Yeah. So I am going to be working on my website so that I can just kind of showcase everything that's available. But right now it's mainly my Instagram page is a really good um, place to go to see what I have. And then, yeah, I'll be doing in-person shows for the, for September to December. And then the whole custom piece as well for anyone yes. locally, right? They can co contact you and. Yeah. Anyone I shipped to the States. I had, um, yeah, I, it was funny. We, we went back and forth. I created this um, big piece. It was mountains to represent her family. Um, a lot of my custom will either be trees or mountains and representing family. I, I love that when it's that kind of that sentimental piece. Um, but it was quite a large piece and I used trim for the mountain. So it was heavy. And we went back and forth and I created it. And she's like, oh, I love it. And I was like, okay, so when do you want to pick it up? And she's like, oh, I'm in New Hampshire. And I was like, oh, I didn't realize you were in the States. And she's like, I didn't realize that you were in Canada. So we worked out the shipping and I packed it up and I shipped it to her. So, um, and I've shipped to BC, I've shipped in, in to Sudbury. So shipping is available too. So even if someone isn't local, we can, we can work that out. Yeah. Have you ever had anybody come to you with material to use to make something? out of the something that they bring to you? I've had a couple people ask me if I would okay. be able to when they when they do their renovation, and for sure. Um, yeah. I did, one of my largest houses that I salvaged from was an 1894 home in Claremont, which is just um, the other side of us. And I made them a sign out of their own lap that said circa 1894. Nice. So they could keep it up, so it was made nice. out. So that was a... Uh, a gift to them because they actually, they gutted their whole home. I salvaged the lath out of their entire home. I had to buy a carport, one of those fabric carports, <laughs> just to store it. Um, I took a lot of their two by eight floor joists as well. Their, their stairs. I kind of, I can't see anything go. If I look at something and think, oh, I could make something with that someday. Mm -hmm. um, I store it. So I have a lot of kind of wood stored in my my backyard in my kids' jungle gym. All kinds if you, if yeah. you could see what's off camera, so, you'd yeah, oh, I identify with you completely. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. you can only look one yeah. way; you can't yeah. look anywhere else. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I did make that for them. Um, and actually, so Susie, who's artsy girl, is my good friend. I ended up getting wood out of a dumpster out of an old um, retail building in downtown Whitby. And when I told her where I got it from, she's like, that's where my dad like had his first business. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. And, and I'm like, do you want me to make like a sign? And it was coming up to their anniversary. So I did their last name. So it was a nice big sign uh, with their last name on it. And it's the laugh from the, the, the place where he had his, like started his business. So yes, I, yeah, I forgot about that. So it's amazing. We had, um... and that's really cool. We had something like that too. We had a, a like a diner closed down close to our yeah. home, an old diner, and they had the old benches, like the booths you could sit in, oh, yeah. and people would carve their yeah. names in the in the booth. And we had it on display at a store, and a person came in and asked us where we got the wood from. We told them the story, and apparently, him and his wife got engaged in that restaurant, possibly in that booth, and we left the we left all the engravings and the writings oh, right. in the wood. So you can right. see people's like, you know, Dave plus Jen yes. and all this kind of stuff. And, yeah. and we left it in there, right? It was so cool because they captured a moment in time. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah. They, he gave it to his wife as a, cool. a wedding anniversary present. Yeah. And um, yeah. something made from the from the place where they got engaged. Like, what's the odds of that, right? That's really neat. Yeah. Well, yeah. And that's, I mean, you guys do some really cool stuff like that whole repurposing of other items, right? A lot of my stuff is, is just with the wood. But I like how you take other items and then create something new with it. That's really cool. Yeah, and we have a great community, and we we were so we're so inspired by all the makers in our store and the makers we talk to on the podcast. Like we're talking to people around the world who do so such amazing things, including yourself. And our listenership is around the world as well. So we've got sixty countries listening to us as we record, and. You just never know who you're going to inspire, who's going to listen to this, and uh, right. it's exciting. It's exciting to be a part of that community, and I'm glad you. I'm glad you brought that up. How community helps you mm -hmm. as a maker to be encouraged and be on task and supported, 
you know, answer the questions and then that you can help others as well. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. The, the, the community is, it's so important. I, I don't know that I would keep putting myself out there if I kind of didn't have that sort of, you know, support in the background where I really felt like, no, I can, I can put this out there because I know all these, these people are going to be like, yes, Joss, like way to go. So yeah, it's, it's really yeah. important. And I feel really lucky that I do have a really good I found a really good community. Sweet. Um, Can you share with everybody all your handles and how they find you and all that great stuff here as we're closing up? Yeah, I should have written them down. So so on Instagram, I am um, at The Salvage Life. Um, Facebook, it's at thesalvagelife.ca. Okay. So it's a little bit different. Um, And that's really where you find me. My website will be thesalvagelife.ca once... Once it's all done. Um, okay. Once it's all ready. Yeah. I don't have that yet. Okay. We'll put all the links as well. Yeah. And if anyone wants to email me, if they feel more comfortable doing that than reaching out on social media, it's joss at thesalvagelife.ca. Beautiful, Joss. So. I'm so happy to have you on. Jen's kicking herself because she wanted to be here with us today for the conversation. But, you know, we'll do that again. We'll have to get another chance to do that. Uh, we would love to host some of your pieces in our store if you have some some extra things lying around those trees sure sound great christmas is a big time for our store so yeah uh, we would love to host some of your products as well keep that in mind yeah i will and that um would be great i will definitely reach out to you for that can't wait to share this and as you mentioned some of your friends and and those in this in your space that are in the salvage and repurposing space we would love to have them on so mm-hmm. if there's any of those contacts you have let them know about the podcast. We'd love to hear their story as well. It's all about sharing the story behind the inspiration to do what we do. And you've done that with yeah. us today. I really appreciate you spending time with us. Well, thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. you got lots of work to do. Come on. you <laughs> got to get up and get going here. So I, I do. I, I, yeah, I've got, yeah, rooms to, yeah, rooms to tear apart, <laughs> art to build. Yeah, lots of things to awesome. do. Awesome. So Josh Greenwood's with us today, everybody. The salvagelife.ca. Uh, it's a website that's coming, but also find her again, Instagram, Facebook. We'll put all the links in the show notes. Just thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be a part of this. And I'm looking forward to working with you much, much more in the future. And a big shout out to all of our friends over at Mango for all the stuff they do as well. It's great to have you today. Awesome. Well, thanks, Dave. I really enjoyed it. Right. Thank you for having me. Thank you. This has been the Upcycle Canada podcast. Thanks for listening today. We appreciate your feedback and would love to connect with you. Email your questions, comments, or suggestions to upcyclecanadapodcast at gmail.com. To find out more about our business and access links to all our social media sites, podcast notes, and more, please visit upcyclecanada.ca. A review of this episode on the podcast app of your choice is always appreciated. Please help us build this community by sharing our podcast with your family and friends. Our thanks to Jacob Moon for the instrumental backing track used in this podcast. Please visit jacobmoon.com for more on this talented Canadian artist. Join us again for more great topics, ideas, and practical steps to help you in your daily life. Thank you for listening. Let's keep this conversation going.